Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. Welcome back to this class research methodology. Uh, in this chapter, I will be discussing on research paradigm and approach. We had completed uh, discussion on overview of research, which is uh, discussed and presented in chapter 1. Uh, in the last chapter, chapter 2, we talk about uh, literature review and we had discussed at length on the different types of literature review and also we discussed on uh, the development of theoretical framework prior to that we also discussed about the different uh, types of variables uh, if you can recollect there are six variables that we discussed uh, number one is the independent variable uh, dependent variable mediating variable moderating variable control variable compounding variable six variables all together that can be used to develop our theoretical framework but of course the theoretical framework especially for the quantitative research uh, should be based on certain theories there must be underpinning theories uh, that we refer or use for the development of the theoretical framework and that particular uh, discussion on literature review is aimed uh, to prepare us write our literature review chapter for our thesis uh, if you can recollect I did mention this couple of times uh, in any given thesis report you can expect chapter 2 is normally dedicated for uh, literature review but normally students who uh, who are under my supervision I will split uh, chapter 2 for literature review and also chapter 3 for the theoretical framework but it is okay to combine both it's just that for my uh, style of supervision I, I, I prefer to have the theoretical framework to be um, uh, written in a separate chapter not combined with the literature review chapter and as of today our discussion will be on research paradigm and approach uh, research paradigm uh, has a strong connection with the research methodology chapter uh, that uh, all of you will be writing for your thesis report so in any given thesis or dissertation you can expect to see chapter 3 or sometime chapter 4 uh, the author will be writing on research methodology so what we are going to discuss today in this chapter which uh, revolves around research paradigm is closely or tightly connected to the research methodology chapter of your thesis Okay, research paradigm, uh, uh, this, sorry, this is the content of this chapter. Uh, first, we will provide an overview about research paradigm. And then we will be discussing about research methodology, which is actually uh, one of the premises, one of the premise of uh, research paradigm. And last, we will be talking about induction versus deduction research. Okay, what is meant by research paradigm or the word paradigm itself? A paradigm is a set of assumption and perceptual orientation shared by members of the research community. So, a set of assumption uh, are pulled by researchers. So, for any given phenomenon, when we want to embark uh, on a research studying a phenomenon, we should approach and we should conduct uh, the research by subscribing or following certain paradigm. In other words, we as a researcher at that particular point in time, we should have certain assumption that we are holding to uh, in order for us to continue doing the research. So this assumption is very important because through this assumption, uh, our uh, method will be determined as well as our design so if you look at point number two here paradigm determines how members of the research community view the phenomena how do we perceive how we do we approach and understand the phenomena what is our perspective about the phenomena 
as well as how we should be choosing the appropriate method in order to study the phenomena. Okay, so this is being determined and paradigm. So as I have said, uh, research paradigm is uh, discussed in the chapter 3 uh, of your thesis, in your chapter 3 research methodology. So you will start off presenting or discussing the research paradigm of your research. Now, a research paradigm will have a combination of the following premises. Okay, number one is epistemology, uh, number two, ontology, and number three, methodology. Okay, what is meant by epistemology? Epistemology is concerned with what constitutes to valid, acceptable, or legitimate knowledge. As a researcher, when we view a certain phenomena, we study uh, the phenomena, what is our assumption and understanding in terms of uh, uh, in terms of um, uh, knowledge creation? Remember, when we talk about research. Uh, research is meant to contribute significantly to the body of knowledge. So, uh, what what is our assumption uh, with regard to? Uh, valid knowledge, legitimate knowledge for that particular phenomena that you are studying. For instance, if you are studying uh, about uh, knowledge uh, creation abilities of a knowledge worker, okay, in a certain context, context, say you are studying knowledge creation ability in organization X. So, Prior to conducting that knowledge, what is your assumption that constitute to valid knowledge? Okay, what, what is your assumption and what is your belief uh, to what constitute to valid, acceptable and legitimate knowledge? And how this knowledge will be communicated to others? In what manner? In what format? In what form? Okay, so this is the, 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 the meaning of epistemology. Our assumption, our belief about knowledge creation. Okay, what is our understanding and assumption with regard to valid knowledge for that particular phenomena? And then how this knowledge can be relayed or communicated to other community. The second premise of this uh, paradigm is ontology. Ontology refers to the nature of our belief about the reality. Uh, so, researchers have assumption, sometimes implicit, about the reality. Uh, basically, uh, researcher can view uh, a reality as comprising multiple realities. Not singular, not one reality, but it comprises of multiple uh, realities that very interconnected. Okay, on the other hand, Researcher can also believe that reality uh, can be singular, can be by itself one, and therefore uh, the researcher view the reality as objectivism, meaning to say uh, they view the, the, the phenomena uh, as a single reality, single reality, and uh, the researcher will approach to study the phenomena by uh, not immersing himself in the phenomena. Uh, in contrast, uh, a researcher can also view a phenomena as having multiple realities. Uh, and therefore, instead of uh, looking the reality as single, uh, the researcher believes that this reality uh, multiple and they are interacting uh, and has to be interpreted. Okay, this is what we call as subjectivism. Okay, so this objectivism, subjectivism, probably um, uh, very strange to you, but actually you have come across this word, uh, but in a different perspective. If you can recollect, you know, when you attend attended uh, final examination or uh, you went through um, exam questions, uh, you notice uh, there are questions 
uh, in the form of multiple choice and there are questions that are in the form of subjective questions right so these objective questions is is the analogy of objectivism whereas the subjectivism is the the analogy is like the subjective questions in the final examination it is open ended so you can you can perceive you can you can look at things you know from a different dimension uh, in 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 a different ways and in fact you can write anything under the sun whereas for objectivism okay it is very narrow and very specific okay uh, just like in the final exam for multiple choice questions you just have one answer choices are given you have to choose the correct one so you look at the phenomena as a single reality whereas subjectivism looking at the phenomena as multiple realities okay that is ontology so uh, the, when 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 a researcher approach a certain phenomena when he wants to study a phenomena so he has to be clear on his uh, paradigm uh, in terms of epistemology what he considers as valid legitimate knowledge and how is he going to perceive the uh, phenomena the reality is it going to be a single reality or is it going to be multiple realities now the third premise of uh, paradigm has got to do with methodology so methodology by definition is an articulated theoretically informed approach to production of data and guides the researcher in deciding what type of data is required for a study so uh, methodology is being broken down into one qualitative methodology number two quantitative methodology and number three mixed methodology so the third one mixed methodology is actually a combination of qualitative and quantitative methodology so mixed methodology combines both uh, qualitative and quantitative methodology in one single study okay what is meant by qualitative research okay methodology so qualitative research methodology relies on method based on multiple meanings remember I said about multiple realities that's why so qualitative researcher uh, will look at phenomena uh, and having multiple meanings okay of individual experiences meaning socially and historically constructed and with the intent of developing a theory or a pattern so a qualitative researcher okay a researcher adopting qualitative methodology will collect data okay understand the data and slowly gradually develop a theory by looking at the pattern eh, that that uh, uh, pattern in the data that he had collected so that is qualitative research in contrast we have quantitative research methodology relies on method based on cause and effect okay cause and effect uh, in natural sciences normally we look at cause and effect social sciences normally we look at relationship or association okay based on cause and effect or relationship uh, or association thinking Reduction to specific variables and hypotheses and questions. So the phenomena, the phenomenon being studied will be measured, okay, through the lens of variables. So we look at the phenomena and then we will operationalize the phenomena into variables. Okay, we will measure the phenomena through the lens of variables. We will collect the data based on the variables that we have defined and then we will we will test the data that we have already collected with the intent to uh, test the theory if you can remember uh, in our last discussion on the development of theoretical framework we talk about uh, theories underpinning theories supporting theories conflicting or competing theories uh, whatever it is when you want to develop theoretical framework you will refer to existing theory so the theory that you had uh, you had chosen will become the underpinning theory so remember we talk about theory theory is meant to be tested okay so you collect data 
based on the variables in a quantitative research you analyze the data and then the data is meant to test the hypothesis which is actually aimed for testing the theory okay the next one is mixed method so mixed method combines both uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, research methodology so in a single study you will adopt both quantitative approach in other words uh, it's possible in a study where you have this uh, testing of hypothesis you will define variable uh, and then you will develop the measurement you will collect data and then you will test the uh, hypothesis at the same time also either prior, prior to that or after that quantitative research you will do a qualitative research whereby you will be observing or interviewing or you will be um, doing focus group okay you want to understand meaning experiences okay uh, by the participants eh, in the in the particular context of the phenomenon so mixed method normally takes advantage of the quantitative as well as the qualitative so the strength for each and every methodology is being combined in this uh, mixed method methodology. All right, uh, let's move on to discussing what is meant by inductive and deductive research. Inductive research is a study in which theory is developed from the observation of empirical reality. Thus, general inferences are induced from particular instances, which is the reverse of deductive methods, since it involves moving from individual observation to statements of general patterns or law. Okay, so inductive research uh, is where the researcher collect data, analyze the data, and see the pattern, and end up developing the theory. So that's inductive research. Uh, deductive research, on the other hand, is a type of a study where uh, it conceptualizes uh, uh, framework which has uh, variables, okay, and then this uh, framework together with the relationship will be tested using empirical observation. So empirical observation here means you collect data probably using survey, questionnaire, or you do experiment in the lab, still you, you generate data, collect data. So based on the collected data, you will test uh, the relationship between variables uh, in the framework. So this is deductive research. Let's look the differences between this inductive and deductive research uh, from a diagrammatic point of view. Okay. So if you look at this uh, inductive research, okay, you started with an observation. Uh, you can interview, do focus group, collect document, analyze the document. So all the data that you have already collected, you will try to identify the pattern. And then you will develop tentative hypothesis. Okay, from there, you will develop a theory. Okay, remember in our last chapter, we talked about theory. Uh, there are so many theories and these theories exist through uh, the results of research done by researchers. So through inductive reasoning process, inductive research, researcher will develop theory. So in contrast, we have deductive research, deductive reasoning, whereby from the theory, you will develop your theoretical or conceptual framework. So the chosen theory can be one or two will become the underpinning theory. So this theory will be used to develop your theoretical framework. So uh, the connection, the relationship between these uh, variables in the theoretical framework will be represented by hypothesis, which is meant to be tested through the data that you collected. So the data that you collect, um, will be used to analyze uh, or test the hypothesis that you have developed. So finally, the results will either confirm the theory, uh, support the theory, or you will refute the theory. Alright, uh, 
so we have discussed uh, the premises of paradigm let's uh, recollect let re let's recall what are the three premises of paradigm number one is epistemology epistemology has got to do with our assumption what constitute to valid legitimate knowledge and then we talk about ontology ontology is how we is about our belief looking at reality whether we look at a reality as a single reality objective or multiple reality subjectives okay and then um, the third one is methodology and which is also divided into three one is the qualitative methodology number two quantitative methodology and the third one is the uh, mixed method methodology so all these three premises combined together will form what we call paradigm so paradigm has got three uh, well actually if you refer to any other textbooks a researcher will describe or will categorize met, uh, paradigm as having many some some categorize into five uh, some will categorize as minimum as two others will divide into four so for the purpose of our discussion in this chapter we will divide paradigm into three the one number one is interpretivism number two is positivism and number three is pragmatism okay what is interpretivism paradigm interpretivism paradigm is based on the assumption that social reality is not singular okay it's not singular or objective but it is a very complex uh, multiple reality and therefore it has to be studied okay uh, in a way uh, where the researcher will interpret from different perspective or dimensions okay uh, that is interpretivism paradigm that's why you can see the word interpretive there okay so because interpretive researchers view social reality as being embedded within us within and impossible to abstract from the social setting uh, they interpret the reality through a sense making process rather than a hypothesis testing process so the reality cannot be detached okay from the context this is the view of interpretive uh, researchers interpretivism paradigm okay the second paradigm is positivism so if you uh, conduct a research that use positivism paradigm you at that particular point in time is called positivist researcher so as a positivist researcher you you have this uh, belief uh, of supporting this uh, positivity positivism paradigm and this positivism paradigm is aligned with the hypothetical deductive model of science hypothetical hypothesis deductive remember uh, we talk about hypothesis and then deductive hypothetical deductive that means testing of hypothesis model of science that builds on verifying a priori hypothesis so you will develop hypothesis and then you will operationalize the variables and then you will uh, collect data, analyze the data to test the hypothesis. Okay, and um, studies aligned with positivism paradigm generally focus on identifying explanatory association or causal relationship through quantitative approaches, where empirically based findings from large samples are favored in this regard generalizable inferences replication of findings and control experimentation experimentation have been principles guiding positivist uh, science okay so normally uh, it involves uh, a lot of samples or subjects okay unlike in the interpretivism paradigm the participants the subject the people are normally not many Whereas in positivism paradigm, it involves what we call population, uh, population, and from the population, you have to take sample and 
the sample should be representative enough that means the number must be enough the sampling technique also must be accurate so that the chosen sample is considered representative so based on the data that you analyze taken from this sample it is hoped that the findings can be generalized to the entire population so this is positivism paradigm the next paradigm is pragmatism pragmatism paradigms offers an expense an experience based action oriented framework whereby the purpose of research is to help address the issues of dealing with how people experience and come to know the world in a practical sense so the key word here is practical sense how people understand look at things and then implement you know uh, uh, apply in a day-to-day -day basis okay so uh, in the pragmatism uh, paradigm the focus is on the human capacity to learn to reason and make choices in our environment to respond to and interact with our environment and to adapt to it modify it and shape it in various ways these are constant dynamic and ongoing processes okay so this is the third uh, type of paradigm that is pragmatism paradigm probably the explanation and description is not uh, easily uh, understood by you inshallah in our subsequent slide we will try to relate with the method uh, in this way you can easily understand what uh, what actually constitute to pragmatism paradigm okay now let's review and uh, summarize uh, these three paradigms in terms of ontology uh, methodology and also the strategy interpretivism paradigm subjectivism looking at reality as having multiple uh, reality not singular and it has to be interpreted right and then positivism objectivism looking at reality as singular pragmatism combines both so pragmatism researcher believe that the reality can be seen as both objectivism as well as subjectivism sorry it can be seen as both objectively and subjectively okay in terms of methodology the interpretivism researcher will adopt the qualitative methodology whereas positivism will adopt the quantitative research methodology pragmatism will combine both so it is called the mixed method methodology so it will combine a qualitative methodology and also a quantitative methodology uh, in terms of inductive or deductive for interpretivism if you can remember my previous explanation uh, Interpretivism is regarded as inductive research, whereas positivism is deductive research. As for pragmatism, it combines both inductive as well as deductive research. Okay, let's look at the differences from the reality, from uh, methodology again. Okay, uh, interpretivism multiple reality positivism single reality pragmatism okay reality is constantly renegotiated interpreted uh, sorry and interpreted okay constantly renegotiated and interpreted okay so pragmatism uh, adopts uh, the understanding that reality need to be interpreted and the reality also can be measured and known so the math the methodology will be qualitative for interpretism, quantitative for positivism, mixed method for the pragmatism. Okay, so this is another uh, comparison between interpretivism and positivism. Uh, remember, when we talk about uh, methodology, uh, we will also be talking about the method. And for each method, we will also be talking about the design. For positivism, it is uh, it is fixed design like survey, experimental design. Okay, whereas for interpretivism, it is quite flexible. As I will explain later, you will have different methods such as grounded theory, phenomenology, case study, narrative study. So it is quite quite flexible. 
you can also relate to the data collection technique you know when you interview per, uh, participant okay you will keep on asking and ask you know you will do a lot of probing whereas fig design if you use question a you just distribute okay remember we talk about this um uh, uh, cross-sectional longitudinal okay for fixed design cross-sectional okay, a snapshot okay whereas flexible design has got to do with the longitudinal data you repeat collecting data from the same source all right so let's look at research paradigm versus method okay uh, i will not provide the detail for each and every of this method in our subsequent chapter we will discuss at length uh, but for interpretivism design, uh, sorry, interpretivism paradigm, you have got five methodology, narrative, grounded, phenomenology, ethnographic case study. Positivism, you have survey, uh, through experiment or quasi-experiment. Whereas for pragmatism, you have got either action research or Delphi technique. Okay, but sometimes action research can be positivism only or can be interpretivism only. Same goes to Delphi technique, it can be interpretivism only. But normally when it comes to um, classifying them, uh, researchers always argue, some consider this as pure qualitative, others say it's a combination of qualitative and quantitative. But for the purpose of our discussion, we will classify uh, action research and uh, Delphi technique as under mixed method methodology, which falls under pragmatism paradigm. Okay, uh, in order to test your understanding, I want you to do some uh, exercise, uh, learning activity. So besides the three paradigm that I have discussed, uh, interpretivism, positivism, pragmatism, I want you to identify other paradigms uh, that have been discussed uh, in the literature and try to explain in terms of uh, epistemology, ontology, methodology, you know, the basic premises of a paradigm. Okay, thank you so much uh, for your attention. Uh, we will see you in our future.